Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Laura with Stitching with Laura. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is having a great Saturday. Well, today is Mystery Saturday and I have my container, so let's see what we're going to work on today. Give it a little toss and pick one. And it says, if I can get it undone. Cherry Blossom Trees, and it is a pre-stamped cross-stitch, and I will be back in a few minutes to work on that. All right, see you in a few. All right, I am back, and this is Cherry Blossoms that, that I purchased from Maydeer on um, Amazon, and it is a 14 count. It says 53 by 36 uh, centimeters. Oh, let's just check. I'm pretty sure the 53 by 36 is um, the outside. Yeah. So the whole thing is 36 by 53, but the actual picture is uh, about 11 and a quarter. Let's see here. 11 and a quarter, which is 28 and a half centimeters and so you can see how much they took off of that let me see this side is about 17 and a half inches which is 44 and a half so yeah it's a nice small size picture very small. I mean, compared to some of the others that I have. And the color that I'm using today is 335. Three, there are 33 colors in this. Let me put that up there. So, seriously, everything is just caving in on me today. Oh, what a day. Well, I got a couple things that I noticed today. So when I turned on my computer, or my computer, but YouTube, there was a video today from uh, Jean Farish, and she was talking about, or talking to, I should say, Hang on, because i got to get the name right, or I will just be mad at myself, because I actually actually wrote it down. It's scary but true. Vicki Jeanette from Needlework Press, and Vicki was talking about the history of samplers. She's very, very knowledgeable, and it is a great episode from Jean Farish, and it's Jean... Jean... Ah, sorry, one more time. Jean Farish Needleworks is the name of Jean Farish's webs or her, uh, her channel site on uh, YouTube. So check that out if you're interested in the history of samplers. But it, it was an awesome episode. I watched the whole thing. And there's two people that are very knowledgeable in what they do and... So if you ever need to know anything, those would be your look-up people. <coughs> Along with Nicola Parkman, who does a lot of research about, you know, the samplers she does. So those three people, yeah. But I wanted to tell you about that, that episode. It, it was just awesome. Just awesome. Now, since this is 14 count, I am using two strands of floss. To do this this is kind of a salmon color it's really pretty it look really nice in a uh, did I say sampler color thread color it, it's been a morning I'm supposed to go with uh, my daughter to Walmart and hopefully I'll get her to go to the uh, the thrift stores while we're down there or store 
and see if they have anything. So if I find anything of any great substance, I will let you know. And share it when I get back. Sometimes I find good stuff, sometimes not so much. So, I, I don't know. There's been a lot of people out and about lately. And I don't even know if that thrift store is open. I know one of that other one that I was telling you about, I'm pretty sure I told you about. It's more, I don't, it's not a thrift store. It's not like a, like a Salvation Army or that kind of thing. It's just a private owner that has used things. So, and really good prices. So, I mean, I've only been there once, but I'd like to go back and see if they have anything new. i really like to go back and get that chin Chinese vase that I didn't get, but it was kind of huge. It's why we opted not to get it, because I have no place to sit it. And sitting it on the floor, no... Heaven knows I would run into it. For sure, for sure. Oh, let me show you the colors in this. This is just stunning colors. Hang on. Reaching. But I'll pull them out. Whoops. Perhaps. If I can get everybody going in the same direction. We have extras. And I don't need that anymore because I, I had to take that needle out to give it to my granddaughter. But there's some of the pinks. That's like the excess pinks. It's just going every which way but, but loose here. I must not have wound that up right. And then there's some greens and browns and white. And I'll show you both sides of this. But aren't they beautiful? And then there's the back. Look at that. Just just gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And they're very soft. Very nice. They have the DMC equivalent number on them. This is the color that I'm using. Of course, I had to screw it up when I pulled the thread out. So It doesn't look as pretty as the rest of them. Now I can wrap them. See, I just kind of give it a twist and then I just wrap it so that there's no issues. These are the excess that I used already. So, we we'll just put it in there and match it up later. So, yeah. That is all I watched on YouTube today. So far, I just got up shortly. I had a heck of a time sleeping last night. So, we're back to that again. So, we'll see. I got up, actually. I couldn't sleep, so I got up about 2 o'clock. From laying in bed and tossing and turning and sat up for about another hour and a half and uh, watched some YouTube just to unwind my mind didn't do any stitching because I don't dare start at 2 o'clock in the morning because you know that won't happen. And I had an eight hour day yesterday. <coughs> it was kind of busy. It wasn't too terribly busy. I don't know what is under my feet. But I wish it would go away. Um, yeah. So I was glad to get the heck out of there. And just come home. And sit and do nothing. Oh, goodness gracious. But I thought this red would be easy to see where I was stitching today. Instead of on pale purple or one other color. And other than going to Walmart, I don't know what it is. She, she said she, she told me. I have no idea. I can't remember what she told me she had to get. But I'm excited. Let, let's go 
Yep, let's just get out of here for a little bit and go do something. Because our days are kind of rare where we actually get to go someplace and also to have somebody home while we do. So I don't know if we'll pick up dinner at Big Mickey D's or, or not. Yeah, we'll see. The symbols are real nice and clear on this. And I just started right here along the side for filming purposes, shall we say. But I just got this one tiny corner done. It's kind of hard to look at. I mean, after I've been looking at 11 count, so I don't get this out very often. But, see, that's the whole purpose of Mystery Saturday. It gets me to sew on stuff that I might not stitch on very often. So, everything gets a little bit of love. Whoops. And as you know, 14 count is not my favorite thing. But hey, I can stitch on it if I, if need be. It's not bad, it's just small. Well, for pity's sake. Oh, crap. My thread is all screwed up here. I just took one length. here and took out two strands. I don't know why it's being so so crazy today. I did that one backwards, so sorry. Oh well, next keep moving. I am not a perfectionist. I just want to stitch. But as you know I'm coming backwards. Stitching back this way and it has always given me absolute fits. I hear somebody out there talking. They must be going to work. Let's see, what did I work on? I worked on the Phoenix a little bit last night because, you know, I told you I was about brain dead after work. So, yeah, that happens on the t eight hour day days. Oh, for pity's sake. Can we just go normal? Tired of working backwards. These are such tight squares. I don't know. I get the the two strands are doing good coverage. It's just a little difficult. This fabric, you know, since I haven't stitched very long on it, is still a Kind of stiff. Okay, got that little section done. Let's see how much thread I got left here. I might be able to get a few more in. So, yeah, that's our big plans for the weekend. I don't know if that'll transpire. She gets off work at somewhere around 1, 1.30, something like that. Because she had to work a short day because evidently somebody wasn't going to be there. Which was fine with her. I think she's got Monday off. And I think that the kids actually have a teacher in service day. We're just going to end this thread. Hang on. 
Oh my goodness. Some days. Come on. Come on. It was stuck. So, I don't know. What's up? Oop. Now my thread is sticking to the back. I usually put it up here where I can actually see it. That way if I'm done with it and I need to fold it up for any reason, the thread's all right where I need it. Hang on. We're sliding again. There. Now i got to figure out which one I took two off of. Oh, here we go. I actually got the right one. Yay! And I kind of let it hang, get all the the kinks out of it. Now some people separate two or three strands, and granted it probably lays better, but I'm just too impatient for all that. I just want to stitch. And that would be impeding my progress. Oh, for pity's sake. I am having a heck of a time today. <sighs> there we go. It's not that difficult, and that threader works really good. I saw... No, that's not what... I was going to say I saw a threader that had an actual handle on it. I don't know. But it's that you know the wire threader I have not had any luck with them I bought some of course they were cheap uh, there was like 50 for a dollar and a half you know but they were made just like the ones that used to come in with needles in a packet very cheaply made and every time I'd pull through it didn't work for this kind of cross stitch if you were going to or sewing, I should say. If you were going to sew, like, like a hem or a seam or something, it would have been really great, but it didn't work. Not for embroidery floss. It just pulled right out of there every time. I even tried to super glue it. It didn't work. Was not happening for this one. So I don't know what I'll, I, I worked, no, I was thinking I worked a little bit on my, uh, what do you call it, my Christmas ornament, but I didn't, I just worked on the phoenix, because I could sit it in my lap and just stitch, sometimes I just need to stitch, I don't need to try to figure it out, just, just stitch, so I didn't work on the Bristol sampler yesterday, it was too much for that day trying to keep you in frame here and I didn't watch any other floss tubers I don't think like I said I just wanted something on Netflix that just carried on. Oh, I watched. Now, it, it wasn't exactly like I thought it was going to be. There's a book, and it's called The Girl. Girl on the Train. I think that's the name of it. Don't ask me who wrote that book. But I tried to read it, or I had it on my audibles. And I only got through part of it, because it kept skipping back and forth, and I couldn't keep track. So now, <coughs> on Netflix, there is a movie called The Girl on the Train, but it is done in, um, like, kind of like Bollywood, but not, not that happy-go-lucky thing. It's not that kind of a movie. 
It has a few dance music scenes in the beginning, but that's about it. And it's a network, ugh, Netflix original. And, you know, they use the premise of the girl on the train for the movie. I don't know if they, I didn't see the credits. I wasn't paying attention to see if it, you know, was supposed to actually coincide with that book. But it was good, you know, but it was subtitled in parts. So, yeah. But I made it through it. That that was just about as far, for pity's sake, as far as I could get it to. I don't know. It wasn't what I thought it was. So it was okay. It was an okay movie if you follow it all the way through. But it actually took place in London and not, you know, in India or anything like that. So. It was kind of a, a good suspense thing. I don't know. I wouldn't say it was great or spectacular. You'd have to judge for yourself. I don't know how I got through a, a subtitled movie. and I was so tired. And, of course, I couldn't stitch during the whole thing because I had to read the stupid subtitles. Yeah, it was a little different. So, I don't know. Haven't watched anything else on YouTube. I'm not YouTube. Netflix that has really tripped my trigger. But we'll see. I didn't go looking because, like I said, I was tired. So I didn't go looking for anything new or different. But I recognized that title scene. And that's what got me looking and since I didn't read or finish listening to the rest of that book I have no idea if it coincides or not because like I said whatever I was listening to or reading it lost me about mm, half the way in and I was like what the heck is going on it and it was definitely something better seen than listened to or read because you didn't have to imagine what was going on. It, it was a little different. Just a little different. So. Haven't read. I'm still trying to read Skeleton in the Closet. From. Uh, Beacon. Is the. What do you call it? The. Beacon is the author's name, but it's called The Skeleton in the Closet. It's interesting. It keeps you going. And it's British, I think. I think. First guess. But I'd definitely read another book by them, just to kind of comparison shop, if you will. I do that all. I'll pick an author that I've never ever heard of, listen to something, and and fairly like the book, and then I'll have to get something else of theirs to kind of see, oh, well, they consistently do so and so, you know. I know. I must be terribly bored. But it happens that way. That reminds me, i got to take the audiobooks back to the library. I might have to do that on Monday. Because they're not something I want to put in their drop box. They have a slot. I mean, it actually goes into that. But I don't like that. Putting them in there, I always think something's going to happen to them. And, yeah. goodness so I don't know what else we're up to today or this weekend even 
I have a little bit of housework I gotta get done because it's getting on my last work nerve. I went in there into my studio, laughingly I call it the studio, because it's full of boxes and crap, and I was gonna pull out stuff on Thursday, and I thought, no, nope, that is definitely a weekend thing because it's gonna take more than one day to stuff needs to be reboxed. Because I just took it off of this table so that I could have it for stitching or diamond painting. And, you know, didn't want the paint near there. And all the other doodads that went with mixed media. And they're still in boxes two years later. Yeah. Well, not two years, maybe a year and a half ago. And, yeah, there's stuff that just needs to get the heck out of there. But finding the energy to do that, and it is like two separate, separate things. So we'll see if it transpires or not. Hey, I got the shelf done last weekend, so maybe I can get one room reorganized. We'll just have to wait and see. where we're at. This is going to be so pretty when it's done. It's got several shades of pink. I can hardly wait for them all to come together. That's basically why I bought it was because of all those shades of pink. Not that I'm a pink lover. I can't wear pink. Pink looks horrible on me. But I like the shading in this. And that's what drew it to me. So, all right, guys. Well, I think that that is going to be about it. We've got a little bit done. It's kind of slow going, but hey, we'll get one part done and, and keep on moving. Maybe I'll keep this out today and work a little more on it. I have no idea. All depends. But I always try to have one pre-stamped out. Excuse me, because it's um, it's nice to just grab it and stitch. And I'm one of those crazy people that feels like they they're compelled to have to do something while you're just sitting there. Yeah, it happens all the time, all the time. All right, guys. Now what did I do with? I was gonna bring my whoops. Sorry. I don't think you could have gotten that pattern with that little glance, but yeah, it's going to be beautiful. Look at all that pink. Just beautiful. All right, guys, we will see you again tomorrow. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and please hit the bell. And that way you'll know when my next video comes out. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands. God bless, and we'll see you next time. Keep stitching.